there is a rising interest in complexity in the uh, academic community in Europe. Following this, uh, in discussions with the Brussels offices, uh, we, have been, uh, uh, we have been asked to host uh, this workshop as a point of meeting between industry and academia, eventually to see what practical problems will touch some interesting theories and eventually meeting each other and becoming a seed of something new and interesting in the future. So, the expectation is that uh, in the morning it will be more oriented on presentations. Dr. Huberman from IT Labs in Palo Alto, he will be giving invited talk about his research. He, uh, after that, we will have Professor Mitchelton Kelly from London School of Economics representing Rolls Royce case about using complexity for practical purposes. And then in the afternoon, you will see, you will have uh, Dr. Richard Taylor from uh, uh, HP Labs Bristol, and we will have a uh, uh, gentleman who is academic, but also he is uh, associated with more small startup here doing uh, uh, Bayesian uh, networks research. And finally, you will observe that uh, morning is more about presentation and short parts of discussions, while afternoon we have block discussion slots, 45 minutes in each, uh, in each everyone is invited to come and discuss, just take into account that we are in space in which there is a recording of event, and please don't talk about things which you consider should not be talked about in this workshop. So if you consider that something is confidential, Please just stop recording at that point. Ask uh, crew here to stop recording. And uh, we have excuse from uh, Professor Bourgin from uh, uh, Paris. He's uh, president of European Complex System Society. He couldn't make it to come uh, for the opening, but he will be here presenting uh, certain things uh, quarter to, to noon. And now I will pass the word to uh, Dr. Sylvain Sadier. Uh, he is a uh, director of HP France Education and also he was a uh, managing HP Labs uh, being in Grenoble uh, one or two years ago here. So, thank you. Uh, in that very small talk, I uh, will represent the uh, management of the HP site in Grenoble, making a cold welcome to all of you outside and a very warm welcome to all of you inside. In the so um, what I would like as well to say is in this region of Grenoble and the extended region from Lyon to Milano, there is a great extent of people working on complex systems in the day-to-day -day life and working as well on the abstraction of those complex systems. So this is probably a good opportunity um, to have this workshop here just to mention that uh, it's important for that region to work on that domain. Um, and now I will take my uh, my hat of uh, Director of Education uh, for France. Uh, what I'm seeing more and more uh, is any engineer, any business person will be, uh, will face complex systems in his life. And at the moment, only uh, top-notch researchers and very distinguished uh, researchers like you are, are working on that. And as soon as we can make this and make the right tools available to engineers and business people to make their day-to-day -day life, um, it will be an extremely large progress in that domain. But today, uh, the work is or yours. And this is a message I'm consistently giving to uh, um, uh, pedagogical people in uh, universities and engineering schools. That complex system is something important. Um, specifically for French people, where the analytical is oversized. Uh, Sometimes um, they said, oh yeah, this is a complex system, and we like it, and we can live with it. And yeah, what to do with it? <laughs> and this is probably the most important thing that at the level of the French pedagogy, we need to move on. And, uh, this is about it, uh, I would like to say. Um, hopefully we will uh, have uh, tools in the 10 to 20 years uh, uh, to use. <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you very much. Professor Kelly, now it's...
Yes, I am the pro uh, Dr. Accordino yes. uh, on behalf of uh, Russell's. Would like to talk? No, no, it's for yes, yes, yes. Dr. Franco Accordino from the Scientific Office. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, good morning. I'm Dr. Accordino. I'm here uh, on behalf of Unit F1. Future Emerging Technologies of the uh, Director General Information Society Media of the European Commission. And uh, I'm uh, really happy and grateful to come out, the organizers, to invite me. Actually, I'm uh, <coughs> Ralph Doom, Michael Lee, from uh, uh, the FET unit, um, who is the project officer responsible for the Decent uh, Network of Excellence. Uh, that came here, but uh, he was uh, engaged in other prior uh, activities, uh, and so he asked me to come here. I'm from a different unit, indeed. I'm from the uh, Great Technologies Unit, which is the same directory, and uh, I've been quite a lot interested in complexity science and how complexity can be uh, mastered, so to say, or reduced for the use of uh, uh, ICT. Uh, large ICT infrastructures like grid technologies. So <coughs> I want to just uh, uh, provide some uh, elements for the for discussion uh, today. But the few slides, I have very short time, but I'll try to, to be very short. So we know what are <coughs> complex problems. I sh should not tell you what complex problems are. So if we have a pen and we let this pen falling down, we know exactly what is the time taken by the pen to reach the ground. So this is a very simple problem. <coughs> if we have a parameter, we know there were people some centuries ago that could give us the, the exact load, the exact uh, formula to, to, to describe this uh, relatively simple uh, context. Well, on the other side, we have a very other, very different uh, uh, context, different kind of problems. We have a complex uh, artifact, uh, like an aircraft, for example, um, uh, where you have millions and millions of components, each of them is uh, modeled and has a model. It is simulated before being implemented and going into production. And after it is uh, into production and your operation, it's of course uh, constantly monitored with lots of data acquisition. And so, answering the, the question, when this <coughs> will reach the ground, sorry, I don't use <laughs> other terms like when it crash, <laughs> it could be. But it's a very difficult question to, to answer, right? And it's here that the great technologies, right, that the ICT, uh, large ICT infrastructures, hardware and software infrastructure can come into help in, uh, in uh, trying to, um, uh, to um, run complex models where you have thousands and thousands of parameters and then you have uh, to feed these parameters with data that you constantly acquire. Uh, so, and this is one, one uh, um, way of seeing the links between uh, uh, complexity science and complex systems in general, and uh, so through complex modeling and simulation and so on, and, uh, and the grid technologies. Uh, on the other side, we have grid technologies that are per se uh, complex systems themselves, because nowadays the grid, <coughs> grid life system. Is composed by thousands, thousands of heterogeneous components that have, that sometimes show emergent behaviors, that they are having faults that are not predictable, and so the systems, the, the system <coughs> has to react. Mm -hmm. So we have issues like dependability that are key in the so the system, like the grid, must show, must ensure dependability of it. And so the grid is something which is totally different according to new definition of grid. It's a uh, grid provides an abstraction for resource sharing and collaboration across multiple administrative domains. So it's something that is uh, not only to solve problems requiring uh, uh, huge computational storage uh, uh, power to be solved, but also per se this is something that is enabling uh, complex uh, workflows among different organizations that are created on the fly and they are operated and executed and managed for a while and then they are dissolved. So it shows a social behavior, so to say, or revolutionary behavior. <coughs> and so it's something that is for increasing the, the productivity and reducing the total cost of ownership because it enables 
outsourcing of IT processes. That's what today the grid is. And this is another way of seeing the link between the, the ICT technologies and the complexity on, the, on one side. It's something that is for delivering knowledge to everybody at any time, everywhere. Mm -hmm. And it's also that infrastructure, as I said, for, uh, for dynamic virtual organizations and also something that we can use as the uh, building block for the next generation internet. Another complex structure, another complex system is evolving in a way that is not that easy to predict. Huh? And so I jump directly to the conclusion because, uh, uh, okay, I want to just suspend a few words on this because it might be stimulating. We see that the grid technologies were uh, coming from the convergence of two different trends. On the one side, the web, and the other side, the high performance computing. And now, nowadays, we have the carbon grids that are mostly used to solve large uh, uh, problems, uh, complex problems in the e-science domain. Uh, so they are most interesting for this e-science community. Mm -hmm. Now, the main challenge is to bring the grids to the business and industry. That's what is the main challenge. What to do to do that? Well, in the European Commission, we have set up an expert group uh, of, of number of industrialists and, uh, <coughs> and, um, and people from academia who uh, has defined, have defined a new definition of grid, which is called the next generation grid, which I presented in my previous slides. And in order for this uh, next generation grid to be implemented, and to be realized, it's clear that we have a number of disciplines that have to be <coughs> considered. And the results of this discipline taken into consideration to develop this complex structure, which is called the grid. And those are for sure the knowledge technologies, on one side the software technologies, dependability and so on, trust and security. How do you trust a grid? Uh, a grid, a very uh, large scale uh, ICT system. There are lots of issues related to that. We have for sure complexity system, complex system and complexity science research, which is fundamental to see how to <clears throat> to model these systems, how to simulate, anticipate possible faults of these large systems like the grid, huh? uh, and especially to tackle the new requirements, <coughs> both from the uh, hardware networking side, where we see more and more miniaturization in the components, but also from the application side, where we see application with uh, continuously changing the, uh, requirements. And so we have an issue of adaptability here. We have an issue also of emergence of properties that are typical keywords that you see and you hear quite a lot on the complex system theory. So there is a clear link here, and we need research in this complex science to tackle the complexity of the grid-like grid type of architectures, evolving architectures. So, but the end, the ultimate aim out of this story is to move it forward and to achieve the vision of the so-called service-oriented knowledge utility. And so to really transform the grid in, in that technology that is underpinning the provision of knowledge as a service on a pay-per-use basis uh, as an utility. That is that we plug and get access to a wealth of resources that we can take decision at the right moment, at the right time, uh, wherever we are. Or just we don't even have to plug because our interface is with us. We are just walking in a street, in a park, or in a bus, and we get the exact decision at the right moment. Like today, we'll have to come here to reach, uh, uh, to reach this, uh, this site. There were some weather conditions that were unpredictable, and that we could have helped by some type, such type of services. And this is absolutely related to complexity, definitely. There is a link for that, because to set up this type of services, there is really huge uh, uh, sets of issues to be dipped and to be, and here complexity science can come in to help. So I want to stop here. I think that this is one way of uh, triggering some discussion in the, in the next uh, speeches, and maybe it is complementing. And I thank you for coming here on behalf of the European Commission that, uh, that is uh, uh, supporting this uh, uh, FP5 project uh, network of excellence uh, existence led by it. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Okay, and finally, I would like to welcome you on behalf of Existence um, because these uh, specific seminars that have been held 
um, in different parts of Europe have got the, 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 the specific objective is to disseminate um, the ideas of complexity to the business community. These are not specifically for um, primarily for academics. It is for you. It is for the business community. And that is why today we have focused very much on complexity and um, business. So on behalf of the Existence um, Network of Excellence, welcome. And I would first like to welcome our first um, speaker, um, who is Dr. Bernardo Huberman, who not only is he a senior HP fellow here um, at HP, but he is also a consulting professor in the Department of Applied Physics at Stanford University.